NHL 7 Canadian teams in action on Saturday. We thought we'd do an early season report card with the daily face-offs, Frank Saravalli. Hey, Frank, let's start in the West. Both the Oilers and Flames struggling to start the year. What grade do you give the Alberta teams? Martine, I'm not an easy grader, so let's buckle up here. And I'm going to give both the Oilers and the Flames an F. And that's for failure to launch. And I honestly can't tell you which team I'm more surprised with their start and for two totally different reasons. Yes, we expected a lot from the cup or bust Oilers so far to start the year. But the Flames, I spent some time with both these teams in training camp. The vibes were so different with Daryl Sutter gone that I was surprised to see them fall out of the gate. The Oilers, I think, to this point, have been a bit unlucky. Uh, their expected goals for at 5-on-5 five five is first in the league. They're 31st in save percentage. They need more help from their goalies. Conversely, down highway two, Jacob Markstrom has inarguably been the Flames' best player to this point, and they have very little to show for it. They've gotten little production from their stars, and I think the one common thread, although better this week since the Heritage Classic began, the effort and compete level from both these teams was not there in the first handful of games. Both teams get an F because there is no reason that the Anaheim Ducks should be seven points north of both teams in Alberta. Okay, F's tough teacher. On the flip side, the Canucks, 7-2-1 and one to start their season, including a 10-goal outburst against the Sharks on Thursday. How do you rank Vancouver? I give the Canucks an A, and there's so many reasons why, but the biggest thing that stands out for me as their defense has gotten so much better is also how much more structure this Canucks team is playing with under Rick Tockett. Not just that, but they compete. I love that there's been some criticism about Rick Tockett rolling out his first power play unit in a couple of lopsided games to this point. This isn't, you know, Bantam double A. This is the NHL where these teams are competing to win and playing for keep. So I'm all right with the way that the Canucks have handled that part and their effort so far. When they've been questioned in the early season after a loss to Philly, Rick Tockett called his team soft. They've responded. They've got a Norris Trophy candidate on the back end and backing everything up is a Vezina Trophy candidate in Thatcher Demko. Meanwhile, Winnipeg 4-4-2 four, four, and two to start the year. How do you grade the Jets 10 games in? I'm going to give them a C. I mean, I think they've had a pretty balanced scoring approach. I think, you know, when you look at some of the steps that some of their players have taken, Cole Perfetti is one. I like what I've seen from him. I think it's been slightly more mediocre, though. I, a little bit of nonchalance, I think, creeps into their game at times. Um, I think one thing that's been ultra surprising is Connor Hellebuck's play in net. They can't seem to get a stop at the big moment to pile up some wins on the board. And for a guy that signed a $60 million contract extension before the season started. I think we all expected him to revert back to Vezina form, and he just hasn't done that to this point yet. Okay, let's head east where the Leafs have had an interesting start to the year. Win two, lose two, win three, lose three. How do you have them ranked? I'm going to give them a C also. I think it's just okay. I think we're all expecting more from this collection of players. And not to say it's been bad. The record's fine. The production's fine. Most of the metrics are fine. There have been hiccups here or there. But it also kind of feels, Martine, like something just hasn't really quite clicked with this Leafs team yet. I don't know what the reason for that is. Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews, you'd look at their production and you'd say, okay, yeah, this is okay. We can live with this for the amount of money these guys are making. But the eye test, though, the team collectively just isn't passing that part of it. And so I think they still have some question marks on defense and also in net with Ilya Samsonov. I love what Joseph Wall's done, but I think they're going to need more of a tandem down the stretch. The Canadians tied in the standings with the Maple Leafs 12 points through 10 games. What's Montreal's grade? I'm going to give them a B plus. And the biggest thing that stood out to me was earlier this week, Marty St. Louis, their coach, he throws around compliments at times like manhole covers. And when he said that their best game of his coaching tenure to this point was a loss to the Vegas Golden Knights, 
that really hit me and i was like wow this team is making progress they've been super exciting and fun to watch um i think they're hungry they compete and they're taking on a little bit of that personality of their coach and so that relentless com competition and compete level i think will serve them really well this is a team that i think has a playoff ready forward group they need a lot of work in other areas and i'm not sure they can sustain it but this is a big step forward for montreal Finally, the Senators, who have maybe made more news off the ice than on it. Give us your thoughts on Ottawa. I wanted to give them an I for incomplete, but I think ultimately I'm going to give them a D. And you could certainly make the argument that they deserve an F. But when you look at this start and all of the injuries that piled up, that's the one thing that kind of gives me some pause. You're missing half of your defense core. Nonetheless, the way that this team has started waking up on Saturday morning in last place in their division is wholly unacceptable for the expectations that they had going into this year. I think we've all thought these last couple years that this collection of players should be achieving a lot more than they have. They've started slow out of the gate a number of different times uh, under DJ Smith and now he has 300 games behind a Sens bench only one person one man has coached more games in Senators franchise history and yet this team still cannot seem to find its stride and to me you know you're starting to run out of runway 10 more games of this where you're under 500 and you will again shoot yourself in the foot and really significantly limit your playoff chances. The Sens, just like the Oilers and some other teams across Canada, really need to find a way to get going. Or they're going to be in the principal's office. Frank Cervalli, always appreciate your insight. Thanks for this. <laughs>